in the sex industry, there's a lot of talk about holes. Holes to put things in, as objects to be exploited for someone else's pleasure. The truth is, for many in the sex industry, they are presented as objects for the male gaze, holes filled by men's fantasies without any desires of their own. However, while this is certainly true, after a seven-year study of the industry, my colleague Trish Rubottom and I found that this is not the entire truth. What is perhaps more surprising is that we found many women and transgendered sex workers who were refusing to be simply holes. Instead, they have found, embraced, and brought their whole selves into their work. When you are a whole, you're left diminished and partially empty since you have to be filled up with something for somebody else. But to be whole means that you are taking up all the space, the undiminished entirety for yourself. And what we discovered was that many sex workers found ways to make themselves whole. I'll be honest, I'm one of the last people you would expect to study the sex industry. In fact, I am so square that I thought Fifty Shades of Grey was a decorating show. No joke. <laughs> the truth is I'm a nerdy university professor at the University of Alberta, and I have dedicated my career to exploring processes of social change. That is how we transform culture, behavior, and social structures over time. And it was social change that led Trish and I to first start researching the sex industry back in 2013 when the laws in Canada were changing and there were social movements on both sides trying to influence new laws. This was social change in the making. So we started turning up at protests, fundraisers, marching and talking to activists. After doing a number of interviews, we discovered a pattern that contradicted our naive understanding of the sex industry. All of the sex workers we talked to were running their own businesses and creating innovative new business models. And the innovations they were talking about were creating spaces where they could bring their whole selves into their work where they had traditionally been marginalized and mistreated. When I tell people outside of the sex industry about these innovations, the reaction is universally one of surprise. People are surprised that street-based prostitution and CD porn companies and strip clubs are not all that exist. They're surprised there are businesses led by women and transgender people, and surprised there are such things as feminist pornography and escort collectives. I was surprised too. This was not the sex industry I had imagined or even feared. The women and transgender innovators we spoke with are doing things differently, changing practices, challenging norms, and creating social change. The innovations created by these sex workers are an intervention into the system that marginalizes them, a carving out and reshaping of space that makes room for their whole undiminished selves. And what we came to realize as we were talking to these amazing innovators is that there's actually a lot they could teach us about ourselves, learning new ways of seeing our bodies, our sexualities, finding, embracing, and expressing our whole selves. And so this talk is about sharing four of the life lessons we learned from these innovators that we think can help those of us who feel marginalized by sexual norms find ways to carve out new space and sexual power in a world that denies so many bodies their agency and wholeness. So let's dig in. Lesson one, we need new stories, our stories. The first innovation I'm going to tell you about is feminist pornography. From feminist pornography, we learned that we need new storylines that allow us to tell our own stories. Now you may be thinking like I did, how can porn be feminist? Isn't that an oxymoron? We've heard that question a lot. So ingrained is the idea that porn is for men that the very idea of feminist porn seems impossible. In fact, before this research, I could not imagine that I would be diving into the world of porn. But it's because of this contradiction that feminist porn was such an interesting innovation for us. We learned that the idea behind feminist porn is to showcase real desire targeted to a woman and trans market. Instead of women and transgender people as objects for the male gaze, meaning designed for cisgender men to watch, the focus is on women and trans folk as performing their own desires for an audience of women and trans folk. To illustrate, let me share a story about an innovator some of you may have heard of, Buck Angel. 
Now, Buck is a transgendered porn pioneer and feminist porn award winner. Through his films, he creates what he calls docuporn, educational porn videos that share his own stories and also provide a platform for other trans men. He told us that at first, porn was a way to accept his own sexuality as a transgender man, to explore his sexuality and have it affirmed by audiences, to feel sexually attractive as a man. But the production company he was working for fetishized him. They cast him as a freak. So he took back his own content and made his own company to produce his own story, his porn. Now he sees his work as a way to challenge society's view of transgender people and to tell others that it's okay to love their bodies and feel their own desire in their own way. Feminist porn is shifting the gaze to the stories we have not yet heard, showcasing the diverse experiences of those who are not cisgender white men. The lesson we can take from Buck and innovators like him is that to find our whole selves, we need new protagonists, new plots, and a new lens so that we can see stories that expand our understanding of desire. These new stories can create the space to discover our own desire so that we can begin to play out our own stories in our own way. Lesson two, we need supported autonomy. The second innovation we came across was escort collectives. Escort collectives showed us that to feel safe to express our whole selves, we need both support and autonomy. Escort collectives are solving a fundamental problem in the industry facing new escorts. And the problem is this. There are basically two options for new escorts, and both of them are problematic. The first option is to work for a traditional escort agency. In this option, the escort is the employee of the agency, and the agency provides all the business supports the escort needs to provide the service. But the agency schedules escorts with back-to-back -back appointments and takes away their choice in clients and scheduling. As we heard over and over again, this was not an ideal option for escorts. It provided support, but no autonomy, no choice. The second option is to work independently. Being an independent escort means doing all of the marketing, screening of clients, location rentals, and other required activities. This can give you voice and choice, but many explain that at best it was overwhelming, and at worst, it could lead to dangerous mistakes in an industry that operates underground. It provided autonomy, but not much support. Enter escort collectives as a third option. In an escort collective, the escort is the customer, and the collective provides business services to support the escort's independent business. The escort might purchase marketing or location rentals, whatever they need to run their independent business. Escort collectives allow escorts to have support and autonomy, to have control over their own work. As one founder told us, to own their own sexuality. From escort collectives, we learn that we need to own our own sexuality, the whole undiminished entirety of that. But that ownership does not mean we have to give up support. We can express and be our whole selves with support and autonomy. We do not have to choose one or the other if we reimagine our relationship with both as the goal. Lesson three, we need body armor. We learn that we need body armor from Neil Burlesque. Neo Burlesque is an innovative revival and remaking of the striptease. In work with Trish and my PhD student, Teddy Carter, we discovered that burlesque was about rethinking sexy. It was a new art form that presented all different bodies as desirable and confident. Teddy spoke to one innovator who co-founded a burlesque troupe for women of color. She told Teddy that growing up in a primarily white neighborhood with televisions showing mostly only white women, she didn't know how to see herself as sexy. When she came across the work of a black cabaret dancer and activist from the 1920s, it gave her permission to feel sexy on her own terms, in her own skin. And so she used the idea of this cabaret dancer in her performances to create her own character. Now, it may seem counterintuitive to use made up characters to explore and embrace our whole sexualities, but we found that characters played a crucial role in helping many of the performers feel comfortable exploring and playing around with new and scary ideas and getting comfortable in their own sexy. In this way, the performers use characters as body armor. 
In doing so, they're able to play and explore things that might seem too bold or too risky without the cover of a character. From burlesque thus, we learn that we need body armor. We need body armor to keep us safe as we experiment and play with our own sexy. Expressing the entirety of oneself can be intimidating, but characters can provide freedom and a pathway towards expression. Last lesson, number four, take the pressure off. One of the most surprising things that we learned while exploring innovations in the sex industry and there were a lot of surprising things, was the genre of comedy porn. Trish first noticed humor during porn shoots when people, real couples, were awkwardly playing out their fantasies in front of a live audience. Funny things happened, the camera kept filming, but then we noticed something more. There was a whole category of comedy porn. Comedy is often the first stage of social change. Comedy has the unique ability to unsettle our taken for granted norms, raising questions in a non-threatening way. It's just a joke, right? And given our rigid rules and intense anxieties about sex, it's no wonder we have so much comedy, even in our porn. Comedy porn taught us that we attach so much meaning and pressure to what we want, worrying that it's too weird or too boring or too outside of whatever box we are all in. It's like we're all thinking everyone else is doing it, doing it better, and is not as stressed as we are. But what we discovered is that when porn festivals put people in a room together to watch porn, there is a crazy collective anxiety in the room. We learned that we are all stressed, and we could all do with a good laugh. From comedy porn, we learned that we need to take the pressure off to be able to embrace our whole selves. We all feel the pressure to have more, better, bigger sex, and also the pressure to not want any weird stuff. Comedy porn shows us that it's all pretty weird, pretty funny, and just fine the way it is. That is, whatever fills you up, that makes you whole, is okay. And if you laugh about it, it's the first step towards embracing and expressing all of you. As a university professor studying social change, I never imagined I would be giving a talk where I talk about porn or even sex, really. This is not what academics usually give talks about. In fact, most of us don't even talk about these things at all because there's so much stigma or even shame. But the innovations we have outlined are reimagining markets, product offerings, and labor practices in the sex industry. These innovations are not a panacea for the exploitation, objectification, and marginalization that still take place but they are starting to create important social change in this space. More than that, I actually believe that we can all learn from these innovators who are creating change in an industry that has given them very little space to do so. These lessons can help us innovate in our own lives despite all the constraints we are facing. We too can follow our own paths, play and experiment, write our own stories and decrease the pressure. Drawing on these lessons, we can shift our understanding of desire from holes to be filled to an undiminished entirety that exists within each of us. We can find, embrace, and express our whole selves in everything we do to become the porn producers, designers, and erotic storytellers of our own lives. And if we bring enough people along with us on this journey, we might actually start to change the systems that constrain us. So let's get started.